What is up YouTube fam? It has been a while. I have my latest build here nicknamed Project Redemption. I'll share in another video why I nicknamed it that. But this is the SX500 platform. I'm going to do a overview of the entire build. I'll start with the powertrain um, and then move on to the rear and then slowly move my way towards the front. So the motor is the infamous QS165 V2. Uh, I think it's rated at, I believe it's f between three to five kilowatts. I got it from Electro and Company. So as you can see here, I have these motor mount tabs that I welded into the frame. I can't really see that. Oh, that one is actually using the stock mount. Um, the tabs are from Royce Ramirez in the Modified Razors for Adults group. Hit him up. He makes some great uh, custom parts for the Razor platforms. Um, as you can see here, the fitness or the fitment is very, very tight. I'll do my best to s show you, but I did have to grind, as you can see right there, a little bit of the motor right here and on the underside just so it would clear the top hoop here for the shock mount. Um, and the reason is, is because with this 12 inch Piranha pit bike wheel, um, the sprocket sits way up to the right here. So I had to move the motor as much to the right as I could. As you can see the nut for the sprocket barely clear is about maybe like half a millimeter so one millimeter so that's why i had to grind the motor i could have grinded the hoop but i didn't want to uh grind because just for structural integrity purposes i don't know if it made sense to do the motor but that was my logic at the time so i just grinded the motor but it clears now it's lined up runs great this is a 72 volt 29.4 amp hour molly cell p42a 120 and 300 amp peak amp bms i've had this battery for a while i've pretty much used it in all my builds it is from my uh friend uh who did pass away uh rest in peace knack so this is my knack pack um great battery um puts out a lot of power can discharge a lot of amps so that is powering this whole system and the brains of the build is this far driver 72680 i mounted it to the left side of the bike and the reason i did that is because i really just with this build i kind of just wanted to get it running so i didn't spend time on making it look pretty and making it look all super clean and nice so i it's pretty much being held together with like zip ties and velcro straps kind of like my other build so um the for those of you that don't know the phase wires on the 165 are very short so this is the only area on the bike i was able to mount it without having to extend the phase wires i do have phase wire extensions um but i don't i'm gonna run it like this for now um i tried running it different places like back here and it just it wouldn't clear um it was hitting the shock and so there it is um i have it set right now i have it set because i'm just been cruising i'm here in arizona it's been triple digits for like the last two and a half weeks um but when i was testing it i had it at about 240 battery amps 680 680 phase amps so the phase amps were maxed out and it pulled like a freight train um wheelies on demand as you can imagine the motor did heat up um a lot of that was because it's it's super hot here so i did add a a fan right there it was a spare part um so it was peaking at around 17 18 kilowatts at that time um i haven't done a speed top speed run yet um it might i'll probably do that maybe later on but i'm assuming with the gearing and what i've seen from this motor and what other people are running um it should easily do 60 65 at minimum so this is a uh, 
420 chain, 11 tooth, and this is a 58 rear sprocket from Rebel Gears. It's custom made for this bolt pattern for this pit bike wheel. Uh, these are the Piranha 12 inch wheels, uh, Supermoto 120 80 12 on the rear. These are PMT Blackfires, soft compound, very nice. They're, they're really made for track, um, very grippy, radial compound, super soft. Uh, some of the best tires you can get, in my opinion, for, for any bike. So that's that. Um, this is the Electrocycle Extended Swing Arm. I believe uh, this one is the 46 inch. It comes with these oil slick or titanium colored um, axles and axle nuts. So pretty much you drill a hole, a hole in the uh, swing arm here. It attaches to the other side with the nut and then this kind of goes in right there where the uh, stock dropout is. Very well designed. Um, it's very robust. Pretty easy to do. All you have to do is drill, I mean, two holes. Um, very great pricing. Um, if you don't want to spend the extra coin on a completely custom swing arm from like Royce Ramirez or anyone else, um, this is a great option. I recommend um, Electrocycle. Jeremy did a great job on this design. Um, great after sales support, customer service. Um, so I definitely uh, recommend and support him. I do have some uh, adjustable drop down pegs. I think these are about like maybe two and a half, three inches. I did make some um, steel spacers from Ace Hardware. I just cut them down and grinded them down to size to fill that gap right there. Um, it's nice because these fold up. Oh, super comfortable. Oh my gosh, it made such a big difference in terms of ride feel and comfort. Um, if you do plan on leaning and things like that, um, they are adjustable. So you could adjust them either uh, forward or back. Uh, so if you do want to lean super deep and stuff you could just adjust them towards this way so it gives you more clearance right now i've just been riding around with my kiddos and cruising so um that's how i have it positioned they're really great very comfortable i got them off ebay i think they're around 35 dollars shipped nice option i believe uh electro is also going to come out with his own drop down pegs as well um extended kickstand that is from Amazon as well I have a uh, rear taillight um, the mount is from um, I believe Tim Newton he uh, 3d printed it um, and this is actually hooked up to the brake lever these hydraulic that's nice and then I have it hooked up to a switch here so This is a uh, Olin shock, and I know those of you that know, it's like, what, you're wearing an Olin's on a Brazer? You're crazy, it's ridiculous, super expensive. Yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> but it's great, super soft, comfortable. I mean, this is one of the best shocks you can get. I got it for a great deal on Amazon Marketplace, so I couldn't pass it up. Um, no complaints there. I think it's about 210 is the length. Adjustable dampening and compression and rebound, all the good stuff there. A 12 volt fan attached to the switch. Um, for the seat, this is a CRF 50 cushion on the SX500 stock seat pan. So pretty much I took off the stock um, leather stitching Took, opened up the CR50 seat, transferred the cushion in there, stapled it on the underside. I didn't do the best job. <laughs> it's pretty ghetto in the back, but it works. It's definitely a lot more comfortable. I got the material from Walmart for like six bucks. It was super cheap. Um, but yeah, this is definitely more comfortable. It, it's not as comfortable as like a Luna float seat, but it's a lot more comfortable than stock um, for the Tushy. Um, so I have the switch panel. This is also from Amazon. I have this as the tail light. Um, this is the front headlight, Navo um, from Amazon. This is some underglows, and I have it 
as you can see right there. Let me turn it off. So there's the underglows right there. Those are 12 volts and the fan. Um, what's nice is uh, about this panel is that it's daisy chained for your uh, hot and then your grounds. So pretty much you just have to hook up your um, power from your accessory. And then I have a, um, a fuse block right there. Um, thanks to Brandon Ellie, EMX Brandon for that. Um, so it's very easy. It makes it a lot easier to just wire everything up. Um, so there's that. These forks are from, I think there's Wholesale Cycle. They're super cheap. Great. You do, I got them for like under $60 shipped. They believe they're 200 millimeter. Um, pretty soft. Um, I, I'm probably going to switch out the fork oil and possibly the springs. I'll do the oil first to see how much, uh, how much stiffer that makes it. Um, but they're great shocks. Um, I mean, you can't really complain too much for something that's like 60 bucks. Um, these triples are from Amazon. They were left over. And how I made a fit was I just pretty much went to Ace Hardware. I got four bushings. Um, I drilled them out to a 15 millimeter with my drill press there. And I'm running a um, 15 millimeter uh, head tube or through or head tube bolt um, because the bearings and everything are inside in the inside the head tube are 15 millimeter. So I didn't want to have to run adapters and do all that stuff. For me, I just had all the parts. I just had to buy bushings and the axle, and I just drilled the bushings to the size I needed, which was 15 millimeter. Put the bushings on the top, bottom, on the underside, and there we go. I mean, it's pretty straightforward for the most part, um, and that's how I made those work. These uh, risers came with these triples from Amazon, so that was nice. These are stock razor handlebars painted on matte black with some matte uh, clear coat. Here is the front. Um, Outbound lighting, uh, headlight, these are mountain bike, uh, they're designed for mountain bikes. What's nice about these is it has, uh, I don't think you could see it from the video, but it has um, something called cutoff technology. Um, so it's pretty much like a lens with a line through the center and it kind of functions the same as a car headlight. So it's not blinding towards oncoming traffic and pedestrians like that one is. <laughs> so it's a little pricey. I had it for a while. I've ran it on all my razors and stuff. So I've just been switching around. Great light. Uh, painted the front stock fender matte black. Uh, these are two 20 millimeter rotors. Um, PMT Blackfire, same as the rear, 100 by 90, 12. These came with these 12 inch uh, piranha. <laughs> Supermoto wheels, um, those are dual piston pit bike brakes from Amazon. I'll link everything in the description so you guys can see a full list of everything that I bought or had for this build. Uh, I mean, 220 millimeter rotors and dual piston pit bike brakes, lots of stopping power there for sure. There are the brake levers. That's the rear. So for this one, I did have to do some ghetto fab. As you can see, I had to use these ghetto adapters to raise up the rear. This is different than the front. As you can see, this is just a single piston. Uh, so the, the brake pad on the right stays stationary. Um, these are 180 millimeter rotors that also came with the 12 inch supermoto wheels from Piranha. And to run these was a little, a little wonky. So I had to buy custom, um, a longer hydraulic brake line. And I believe this banjo on the rear, this banjo, I, I forgot, I think it's like 12 millimeter or something. So I pretty much had to use seals for 15 millimeter 
and um, use the smaller banjo because it it was leaking. It hasn't really been leaking um, lately, but because I'm mix mixing and matching uh, parts just to make everything work, it was leaking for a little bit. Um, so yeah. <laughs> So if you do decide to go this route, just be aware of that. Um, you might get some leaks and stuff. Um, but, I mean, it works. Uh, this is the stock um, brake mount from Electrocycle. This comes with the extended swing arm. It's great because it's adjustable on the back side. Um, it just bolts into with uh, two standard uh, size screws. Um, adjustable also for your chain tension so I'm, I'm not running a chain tension which is nice it makes it a little bit more quiet um, so these are the spacings for mountain bike uh, brakes so that's why I had to do this stuff I'm gonna go to a machine shop eventually and have them just custom make something specifically for that so I don't have to run this ghetto setup but there we go. I believe that is the entire build. I covered everything. Oh, this is my three-speed switch. So one, I believe, is 50%, two is 75%, three is 100%. I'll put um, your basic on and off with the voltmeter uh, phone mount. And then this is an Alta throttle. I got it from eBay for like 65 bucks, and when I checked a week later, it was like 130 Like It skyrocketed in price. But this is a great throttle. I run it on my uh, RSF 650. The build quality is better. The, it has a stiffer spring. The modulation, everything is great. I think this is, in my opinion, this is the best throttle next to maybe like a, um, the not the Magura, but the, I'm sorry, I have a, brain fart but the other more expensive uh, throttle that people like to run gosh I can't believe I just forgot the name um, but I mean it's a great throttle so um, these are ODI Rogue um, MX grips I got from Revzilla these are the most comfortable grips I've ran um, I had these on my old electric scooter and they're very tacky, they don't get dirty, very grippy. Um, even if you have bigger hands, they're, they're still like, the diameter is large enough, so those are great. Um, so this is all pieced together, it's not a kit. Um, it's obviously a little cheaper if you piece together something. Um, kits are great too, I learned on kits. I, I ran uh, kits in the past. And the pinning and things like that are, it's not too hard. They do have a wiring diagram. I just, I didn't use the waterproof connectors that a lot of other people use. I use the stock connectors because I have a whole bunch of extra from previous builds. Um, I do plan on making a, a wiring diagram for the pinning, especially for the throttle on and off switch, three speed switch for the uh, far driver just so it makes it a little bit easier for people that are new or that want to piece together their own uh, powertrain and instead of going the kit route. But that is it. This bike is a beast. It has lots of torque. The top speed is there even though I haven't fully tested it. Super fun. Um, Saronster mentioned that there's just, when, when you build something on your own, you build a relationship with the bike and just the value and that sense of accomplishment and riding something that you built on your own is unparalleled as opposed to buying anything, you know, that's like a production bike. And nothing against buying a production bike. I've bought production scooters and stuff in the past, but nothing really compares to building something on your own and riding it and, you know, the pride that comes with it. And so I encourage y'all to build and tinker and learn. But there it is. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll have links to all the parts, rights I felt there.